Hello teachers, my name is Emily Burdecki. I'm a private Orton Gillingham tutor trained by the Institute for Multisensory Education. I am the creator of the IMSC Orton Gillingham virtual classroom. Today I'm creating a video for these MZ trained teachers who are new to Koala Go and need a more thorough walkthrough of how to get started with this classroom. So I'm gonna take my time, bear with me. If it's something that you already know, hopefully you can just fast forward through that portion, but I'm gonna to try to cover everything that I can in this video. Okay, to get started, questions that I have received so far, um, it seems like the product has been well received, but I have had some questions from people. The first one, um, do you need to be MZ trained to use this product? And the answer is yes. This product was created for MZ trained tutors or teachers or teachers that like to, would like to tutor. Um, you're going to need the training to know what to do. And you're going to need the manuals to um, create your lessons using this classroom template. So it does not come with the concepts already plugged in, you are going to have to create your own um, review decks and add your new concept and change out the words and your dictation. There are some things that you do have to do to prepare the classroom for a lesson. So the way that I use it is that I have one classroom set up as one lesson. If you're teaching in a classroom, then you would make some um, preparations to swap out material for the upcoming week. Once you get in the flow of it, you can do it pretty quickly. Um, but I do understand if you're new to Koala that this is um, a learning curve. So I'm going to walk you through as much as I can in this video, and I hope that it is helpful for you. So what is this MZ Orton Girlingham virtual classroom? If you go to my, uh, my website at leveluploliteracytutor.com, you can click on Popular Playgrounds. Um, I have created over 100 of these classrooms before, so this is not new to me. Um, but this playground is specifically tailored to the MZ curriculum. So I have the demo video right here. And then if you click on any of these images, it's going to bring you to the Koala Go Marketplace where you can purchase this activity. Just to clarify, this is another question that I've received. I do not work for Koala Go. I am a teacher that uses Koala Go. I'm a, um, an educational content creator that shares my products on the Koala Go marketplace. So I'm a huge advocate for Koala Go, but I, I do not work for them. So Koala Go is the software, you might say, that I use to make my creations. Um, so you have the product here. It is $30, a one-time purchase. You purchase it one time and you can create copies of it in order to tailor it to the different IMSC concepts. And Koala Go also has a subscription. I love using the Koala Pro subscription. It gives you everything that you need, more than you can need. I have made so many different copies of this playground and all the other playgrounds. It allows you to make all of those copies. And I'll show you what I mean by the copies of activities. Um, you can add your MZ slides from IOG 2.0. You can still use Koala Free, but it's a little bit limiting. They're going to limit your co-browser. You're going to have pop-up ads of um, asking you to upgrade to Koala Pro. I do really recommend this. It's $21 a month, but honestly, I have, um, my business has really, really benefited from this upgrade. So I, I do feel like it's really worth it. So going back to the product. In the product here, you can see there's many different pictures that you can look through before purchasing. It shows you the different steps that I've created. A virtual classroom. When I say a virtual classroom, I am referring to this world that feels like it's inside of a video game. When you purchase the playground, it's going to ask you to submit payment of $30 for one time. 
And after you pay, it's just going to pop up into your free classroom. You automatically get a free classroom. Um, and you can even test this out when you go to Teach with Koala. When you go to Teach with Koala, you can just hit open Koala Go. And so if you are not ready to test out this playground, you can test out for free the Koala Go platform by hitting open Koala Go. You will not have the MZ curriculum. Um, the MZ activity in your activities, but you will have just a blank whiteboard, an open playground. Um, you'll get the basics if you want to test it out before purchasing this playground or before upgrading to Koala Pro. So that's how you can do that. Let's go back to, all right, so this is what the activity looks like when it's first purchased. I have included 26 whiteboard slides as a bonus to the virtual classroom. So I'll show you those very quickly. This is my cover page. So what I do is I tailor this to whatever lesson I'm teaching. So I have a nice visual. I use the text right here to make the concept number. Let's say I'm doing concept number nine, which is T or turtle. Okay, so now I have that. This is just an overview of the virtual classroom that I will show you in a minute. It shows you where I do the different steps of the MZ lesson in the virtual classroom. It has um, a game path that you can look at from, from the top. So you're just following along the different steps. You start in the phenomic awareness, which is right next to the visual drill. You do your auditory kinesthetic drill on the beach in the sand. The blending drill has its own hut. The vowel intensive is inside of a mountain. There's a basket with these vowel cards that the student can put in order before you do the vowel intensive. There is a new concept in decodable reader, Stone Mountain. You're gonna climb the stairs up into this area. And when you exit, you land in this dictation area that has a bonus activity of these letter tiles. It has your MZ. Um, worksheets for dictation. It has some dictation hands and your visual cues. The red words area is right through a door exiting this dictation area. And in here you have prepared um, images, including MZ uh, red words worksheets, your lines for red words. I, um, I'll walk you through it. There are some bonus activities in here like the um, spelling review with red apples and there's a roll and read. Um, okay, so right around the corner from here, there is a syllabication tree house where you can practice your open and closed syllables. And if you peer over the balcony right here, you can do syllabication on the wall. <clears throat> this includes your MZ syllabication um, resources. And then there's this door here that's gonna bring you to the ocean and the kids love this space. It feels like this magical secret hideout. While they're going through the lesson, they're excited to reach that point in the lesson. They go down the stairs and we have a rapid word chart in sticky notes. There is a, an activity for vocabulary and comprehension. There are also the MZ worksheets for vocabulary and comprehension already plugged in to the virtual world around the corner here. And I can show you that. And then when you open this vault door, when you and the student both walk through this vault door, uh, um, this little image video pops up with this treasure chest and this golden pineapple congratulating you for finishing the game. So to kids, it really feels like they're playing Minecraft or Roblox. It feels like a video game. And I love this so much. And from experiencing this in my lessons, I have to say, like, I'm a huge advocate for this method of teaching because for students that have felt, um, you know, learning trauma, especially associated with literacy, if they, if they have dyslexia or they're just a struggling reader, um, this really gives them like a new slate. It gives them a... And it gives them an opportunity to be the pro in a space where the teacher is not. So it really evens the playing field where most of these kids are going to kind of intuitively know what to do in the space where the teacher 
probably will have to learn a bit. And so even if you just popped in with your student from day one and they have the opportunity to teach you something, it is huge. It's huge for their confidence. They're excited about the lessons. And it has been a, really a game changer for, for me and for my students. So the other slides that come with this playground, <clears throat> um, we have our phoneme graphing chart. So this is our schedule planning tool. We have progress monitoring and some extra instructions. And then also, <clears throat> this is not the virtual classroom, but it is an option if you're um, maybe you had some bad internet connection or you're just introducing this to a student for whatever reason, I just include it as a backup, um, an imitation of the steps that are in this virtual world without actually popping into the playground. So you can use these just as you would inside of the virtual world, but without walking through the playground. This is open playground. So the virtual classroom is AKA playground in Koala Go. I'm going to hit this open playground button. And this is what the classroom looks like from day one. Okay, so this is a clean slate. I also want to add here, you want to invite your student. It's this, this button right here. I'll show you how that works. You can just click invite student. It's gonna give you your classroom link. So this classroom link does not change. And you can email it to your student's parents, however you wanna give that to them. They can bookmark it to their browser and they can use it every time they join their lesson. When they do so, you'll get a little pop up here that Sarah would like to join your classroom and you can accept, hide or deny access to the classroom. It's up to you, but I think it's really nice the classroom stays the same. It's very simple and I don't have any problems with it. Right now I have this hooked up to my document camera. So that is an option that you can add your document camera as another student. Um, but if you go into settings here, you can change what speakers or what cameras you're using. And that is that. I'm gonna turn these off for now because I'm already using this camera over here. <clears throat> you're popping into playground for your very first time and you're thinking this looks cool, but I have no idea what I'm doing. Um, the first thing that I like to do is hit this first person I button. And that changes your point of view, top down view, first person view. Okay. So the first step in the lesson is phonological mm -hmm. awareness. I have these tokens here that you can use with your student while you're doing your um, you can do your Kilpatrick or whatever you use for phonological awareness. <clears throat> um, these tokens are set to clonable. This is make clonable. So you can get as many copies of them as you want. You can hit backspace to delete them, or you can use the shovel to delete something. To delete with the shovel, you have to click the shovel and then click whatever you want to delete. This also works with blocks, so be careful. But if you make any mistakes, there is an undo button. <clears throat> okay, down the path. The path is this blue and stone path across the ground. There is an extra practice room for phonological awareness. Let me backtrack just a second here to explain how I'm even moving throughout the classroom. I'm using my keyboard. The up arrow walks forward. The down arrow walks backwards. I'm gonna turn left with my left arrow and turn right with my right arrow. If I want to jump, I use my space bar. You can also use the shift key if you want to move really fast, like you're making your avatar run. So inside this extra practice room, you can click on the cabinets and they open up and you have other options of things that you can manipulate with your student during phonological awareness. <clears throat> we also have these Alconan boxes, if you want to use those in addition to these manipulatives. Okay, we're walking this way. 
Another thing I want to mention is that these avatars are completely customizable. So you and your student can be whoever you want in your classroom and it will save for your next lesson. And you can change it every lesson or you can change it once, um, whatever you want to do. You go to this customize avatar button, change your skin tone, your cheeks. I have had all different kinds of hair and all different kinds of outfits. And I just think it's fun to switch it up. It's huge for your students that they get to really be whoever they want to be and then jump into this immersive classroom. It, it plays into how engaged and committed they are to learning in this space. So back to first person view, I'm gonna turn around. I have some tips throughout the lesson. Lesson prep in black and tips in white. I can use the focus mode tool to show you these. Lesson prep, create your card deck with the blank sticky notes around the corner. Tip, use focus mode and drag the cards up and out of sight. So that's for teaching. This is for lesson prep around the corner. So let's see what that what we mean by that. So here we have a bunch of clonable cards. Okay, so if I wanted to create a card deck, I can go back out of first person view. These are sticky notes. They are resizable, they are duplicatable, they are clonable. You can do a lot of things with them, but to add text to them, you just double click and add a letter. So let's see what we have here. I'm gonna do M in white. I'll do A. In yellow. Okay, so that's how I do that. Um, you can use the focus mode tool while you are teaching or while you are lesson prepping. Stack the cards like this. And then while you are teaching, you're just gonna flip them up. That's why I have this little arrow here. Up. And your student will do what they're supposed to for the visual drill. You can show them the cards. And I just like to keep them a little bit out of sight, but not so out of sight that I can't retrieve them if we want to review something. If I have a card that we have a miscue and I want to save it for later, I will put it down or to the side. And it is as easy as that. I also did a video that um, is on my YouTube. These clouds, I created these so that you don't have to walk through the lesson to do your lesson prep. You can just focus mode through the different steps and make whatever changes you need to make using this focus mode tool. To change my view here, like zooming in and out, I use the scroll on my mouse. Out, I'm just scrolling down in and I'm scrolling up. And that's how I would change these. But for the purpose of really introducing you to this platform and this product, I'm gonna walk you through the lesson today. So again, I'm using the up arrow walk. I'm going to use the shift key to walk a little bit faster. And again, I have a tip. Tip, drag the sun image up for letter formation practice. So I have created this little sun image. In case you and your student want to work on letter formation, you can lock this in place. And here is where you can use the drawing tool. So while I am teaching, I do have my student have a sand tray in front of them. Uh, depending on the student, I might just have them use the sand tray and I can use this for modeling or I will also have them write in the sand and then write on the board. They can use their finger if they have a touch screen, um, but here's the drawing tool. You can choose your color. You can choose the size of the pen. There's also a vanishing pen. I might do that for some students where if they, they write their letter, it will then disappear. So you don't have to erase it. You can just move on to the next letter. And then we have our eraser. You can always just delete this when you're done with it. Backspace, because 
you can, if this is set to clonable again, it will just drag up as many images as you need. Okay, so not a lot of lesson prep needed for that area because these are things that you're gonna get from your IMSI resources. This is the blending drill. And again, you're going to need to create your card deck, but I have these up here. Here's a magic e-card that I have prepared for you just for fun. Card. Loop, loop chart, you can create your blending drill. So let's say that I have the first one I want to do is L, and then I want to add O. I'm not going to do the whole thing for you here. I'm just trying to walk you through how to do this. And M. Okay, and then when I'm doing this with my students, again, I'm just going to slide these up. You can also slide them down, um, but when I'm teaching, I slide them up and we just flip through them. Um, I have added this over here where you can use, let your student choose. I like to give my students options so they feel like they're in control. Um, one of these items, these are 3D items. It has a bunny already in place, but if they want to choose something else, they can use these for you to point to the different cards for them to say the sounds and then blend together. So that is an option as well. Okay, back to free roaming. I'm gonna walk through this door over here. And this is gonna bring me to my vowel intensive area with my vowel tense, a nice visual to make them feel really immersed in the space. Um, <clears throat> I have this bonus room over here to introduce the visual cues for your vowel intensive. I also have um, this little desk area to do your vowel intensive drill. So these are clonable images in case you accidentally delete or lose any of your vowel cards. These are from MZ as well. Your student is going to do what they need to do with their vowel cards. And then you can proceed with the drill. Um, I like to do it. So I have the student walk up and do this not in focus mode. And then I go ahead and put them in focus mode right here. Um, just so they have a good view where we can do this very seamlessly. Okay, back to free roaming. I'm going to walk over here. Um, I really like to have my student just follow right along with me so that we are walking through the lesson together. It's nice for them that they kind of know what to expect in the different spaces. Okay, so this is the multi-sensory experience. Over here is where I will add my new concept slides. I get these from IMSI's IOG 2.0. I have added them to a Google Drive for myself. And what I do is I open these up, I download the cards. Like that. And then I will show you how to upload them. I also have their decodables in here and the letter formation worksheets. Let's get this one too. Um, just to note, when you're getting these from IOG 2.0, we're using Google Slides, you can download very easily from Google Slides. You go up to File, scroll down, and you can download these slides as JPEGs. Um, so you're going to need in this classroom, you cannot upload a PDF in this space. It, it needs to be a JPEG or PNG. Um, so that makes it pretty easy. How I add my alliteration in new concept slides, add objects, blocks, images, or stickies. I'm gonna click on this little brown box and I'm going to go to my image library. And here I'm gonna upload images by selecting images or you can drag them over. Here I have all the images that I wanna add and I'm gonna drag them right over here. And I'm going to search for them by, by the concepts that they are. So here I have T 
tea, brainstorm tea. So these are some slides I can put over here. Okay, I have my T card. I'm gonna put that right here. My letter formation, if you want to use that. There, this playground does come with the MZ letter formation worksheets, but if you want to use the one from IIG 2.0, you can do that as well. And then I have my new concept slides for letter T. I do highly recommend if you do not have IIG 2.0 to check it out. It is incredibly valuable. When you do the MZ training, you get a free year of IOG 2.0. Um, so check it out. All right, so I can use focus mode with my students to do alliteration and our new concept slides. Then we can walk over here and introduce the new card. I have the basic alphabet image up here with the mirror. When you use the mirror, you can go like this and focus on the mirror, and then you can bring you and your students' videos larger or even full screen. This is the full screen option, so you can really, really look at uh, what we're doing in the mirror. Over here is where I add my graphics from MZ for the Vowel Valley and the consonant chart graphic. You could do your brainstorming. And then this playground also comes with this MZ graphic for the alphabet. We're gonna go down below and just drop down through the floor. And this is where I would add my decodable reader. And we can put that right here, resize it with this up arrow and then lock it with this lock right here. The playground comes with bookmarks and word frames that you can use as well as these focus globes. So I like to give my students an option of what they would like to use. Again, giving them options, letting them be in control of this portion of the lesson. Which one would you like to use? Some of them might do better with a word frame. There's a benefit to that or the bookmark to track their reading. And also you can just use the globe to move along like this, just like we did in the blending hut. But again, focus mode is your friend. And then also to make a copy of this, make clonable and you might want a second copy. I also do a third copy in the ocean room. So I'll show you that. For the decodable reader, you might want to make some marks in red or in green, and that's gonna be with your pen tool. Let's walk through here in this dictation. You can stop here and mark your phoneme graphing chart for your new concept. I have this bonus dictation activity where you can use the tile, these are all set to clonable, to spell. Gonna delete. Um, something that is pretty helpful if you're spelling. You can also just hit the undo button to undo the placement of those cards to make it a really fast drill. Um, over here are the MZ dictation worksheets, and I also have the, the visual cues as images so that you can prep your lesson while you're teaching if you prefer. Um, so if I'm going to spell a word using the visual cue or prepare a word using the visual cues, um, I might do so like this. It makes it pretty simple. And then you can get a new copy of these worksheets right here. We have our dictation hands with a bit of guidance. Your right-handed students are going to use their left hands and the left-handed students will use their right hands. So you can use this image as support during your dictation. 
You can also use these sticky notes to map out some sounds. And then you can walk around the corner here for your sentence dictation. Same thing, here are your MZ worksheets, your visual cues prepared, <clears throat> and you can use your drawing tool. Through the drawbridge, this is where I have red words and syllabication. I like to do a red word review on this roll and read. So this is where lesson prep comes in. Double click on the sticky notes and add your red words. And then you have this, let me make sure that it's visible. Rewards, this is a good moment to mention rewards. You have confetti, stars, dice, and gems that you can give to your student. Use them as much as you like because they will make your student excited. I, I use these for students up to 14 years old and um, I, I have students that end up with 50 stars after a lesson because I just try to keep it as positive and motivating as I can and um, it keeps it fun for them. So this is where you would need your dice. You're gonna roll the dice and they will read the words in that row. So if you prep this ahead of time, and you make a copy for your next concept, you can just swap out the words that you want to add to the review. I'm gonna leave that dice up there. Over here we have, so that's for reading red words. This is for spelling red words in review. We have this apple spelling wall where you can ask your students to review by spelling and even arm tapping using these apple letters, okay? And then to teach a new red word, I go over to this wall and let me show you what this is for. I do have these notes. Um, this etymology computer does not actually do anything. It is a visual, so you cannot, um, you cannot access etymology.com using this computer, but it, it, maybe it's a good reminder. <clears throat> to prepare a red word, you can drag this up and then one of these, and you have created a new red word. So depending on how many red words you have in a lesson, you can prepare it that way. Um, this is where I'm going to spell the red word for the first time. These are all clonable as well, so you can map as many sounds as you want. Use my pen tool. I'm gonna add my definition and etymology and an example. And we are gonna do our arm tapping and then practice writing with our MZ Red Words worksheet. So again, you're gonna need the MZ training to really, really understand all the steps of the lesson. When I go up the stairs here, I have my syllabication tree house. And right here is where I do a quick review, um, unless it's an introduction. This is where you can teach your open and closed syllables. But if it is just in review, I'll just stop here very briefly and do my open and closed syllables. So I love this because it makes um, a fully interactive syllable house. Um, you can click on the door and that will hide this letter. So to change this, I'm going to use my eraser and write some new letters. Okay, so I'm going to ask my student, what letters do you see? What sounds do they make? All right, what word is this? Is the door open or closed? Okay, so is the syllable open or closed? Go ahead and open the door. Ah, okay, so what is the word now? Is the door open or closed? Is the syllable open or closed? And then you can practice a few more words. Um, we're gonna go around the corner here to do syllabication. Again, you get what you need to do this in IMSC training.
Um, but again, all of these images are set to clonable. So you can do what you need to do here. And then we also have our syllable division patterns and the MC cards for syllabication down in this chest below. And next we're gonna go down below into the ocean space that I was talking about. This is where I would have prepared. So this is what you need for lesson prep, a rapid word chart. You can write your words in here and swap them out with new words or new concepts for the next lesson. Um, I do the top three rows I do in red words and the top or the, the bottom two rows I do in green words. And then I will just have the student let me know when they're ready. We have a nice timer here and time them. I let them know that I'm timing them. I, I help them get excited about um, fluency in our reading and I will mark their time here, how many are accurate and take a screenshot for my progress monitoring. If they have any trouble with any of these words, I will rotate them so we can talk about them afterwards. And within that screenshot, I'll know which one they miscued and how they did that. I'm also taking notes in my folder for each student and how the lesson is going. Uh, around the corner here, I have a vocabulary activity. What, what is the word? What does it mean? What is it like? What is it not like? These are sticky notes, so you can type. Or you can also just use the pen tool and write right over these. You can zoom in to have the student draw a picture. Um, this is for reading comprehension. You could talk about your story. I put another copy of the decodable reader right over here. So you can use this as another um, fresh read of your decodable reader and also to reference when you're doing your vocabulary and comprehension. These are IMSI worksheets that you can use. You can actually just drag them over here if you would like, rotate them, blow them up and work on them like this. Our word web for vocabulary. They are ready to go. And then I do my spelling assessment right here. There are two ways to do this. You can just ask your student, dictate which words you want them to, to spell. They can write with their pen tool or use a sticky note. If you want to make it a little more exciting, I've added the option for you to allow your student to roll their way through this game path as they're spelling. So I would say, all right, here's your little alien avatar. Um, and you can roll the dice every time you roll the dice. One, two, three, four. All right, go ahead and spell a word. Roll again. One, two, three, good job. Go ahead and spell a word and I'll give them a star every time they spell, every time they do something fun um, to keep it just really fun and motivating. At the end of the lesson, we're both gonna walk through this bolt. You can close the bolt by clicking on it or open it by clicking it again. And then we walk through here together. Oh, wow, there's a treasure chest full of crystals. You did it, good work. Okay, so that is how we complete one full lesson in this virtual classroom. I'm gonna jump off the side here so I can go back to the top. <clears throat> the main areas that I am preparing are the visual drill, the blending drill, the multi-sensory experience. I'm also adding the decodable readers. I have the option to do lesson prep for dictation. I have the option to do lesson prep for red words. You are going to want to prepare your roll and read. Um, you can get started on syllabication, but really that's something you can do during the lesson. 
And you're going to want to go down below to the rapid word chart and edit that. Again, I have another video on how to do lesson prep using the focus tool without having to walk through the playground. I'm gonna take a moment to talk about the activities. So this is considered one activity that you've purchased from the marketplace. What you want to do is go to my activities to the right here. And you want to make a copy. So this is your original copy. I'm going to duplicate it because I want to make a second copy because I want to tailor a copy of this for a concept. When I do that, I can use it with multiple students by making a copy of that. Okay, so let's say that I make this copy and now I have copy of MZ Orton Gillingham. I'm going to change this so that I, I know which concept it is. I'm going to delete copy of. And I am going to add concept number seven. And then I'm going to save it. You can create a group to save all of your prepared lessons. I do that with MZ Lessons. And from there, I can make a copy of this to add to a student group that I'm going to use with a student. So ideally, the way that I do it is to create a bunch of prepared lessons and then make copies for my students. And I can edit them as needed for that student. But it saves me a whole lot of lesson prep when I do it this way. So here's my copy that I want to use for my student. I can rename it for Tristan. And then add to group Tristan. You don't have to do both of these things, but that is an option. And now you are set to teach. Okay, everyone, I hope that this was a helpful video. Please feel free to send me an email with any questions that you may have at leveluplliteracytutor at gmail.com. I will put that in the description as well. I am here to support you along your journey. I hope this was helpful and I'm excited for you to explore this new product. Thank you so much.